Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. God is good, dear friends. I'd like to read you part of the gospel for tomorrow, Sunday. And I'm taking Mark chapter 9. And I'm going to start at verse 42 up to four, verse 47. But anyone who is the downfall of these little ones who have faith would be better thrown into the sea with a great millstone hung around his neck. And if your hand should be your downfall, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than to have two hands and go to hell into the fire that can never be put out. And if your foot should be your downfall, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye should be your downfall, tear it out. It is better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where their worm will never die nor their fire be put out for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is a good thing but if salt has become tasteless how can you make it salty again? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What happens when salt becomes tasteless? I'm one of these people who likes to add salt in my food. And I'm told by the doctors that this is not a good thing that salt should always be cooked in the food and then not too much. However, when food is saltless, we don't get the full taste of that food. And it is possible that you and I as Christians, something is lacking that doesn't make us full of the love of God, full of the Holy Spirit, and full of good things. It is possible that the taste of me, if I were salt, is not what it should be. And Jesus gives a very strong teaching here today. And he says that it's possible that you and I can lead people astray thinking that we are doing good. And then he says, if there is something in your life which is preventing you from growing as a Christian, discover what it is and deal with it. You know, if we want to change the world, we have to change ourselves. If we don't change ourselves, we cannot change other people. And that's what Jesus means when he says, if your eye offends you, cut it out. If your hand offends you, chop it off. He's not asking us to take knives and to mutilate ourselves. But he's asking us to change ourselves, to take time to think, what needs to change in my life? If you're a teacher or a preacher or a leader, 
You know, we always want to tell people, change, do this, make your life better. But do we get time to change ourselves? How can I change myself? I must get rid of ignorance. I must know the word of Christ. I must know how the world works. How much time do you take learning new things? You know, an obstacle to education sometimes is pride. I know everything. I don't need to learn anything more. Or sometimes we say, oh, I don't have any time to study or to read the word of God. We need to be educated in order to change. And we need spiritual direction. And dear friend, if there's something in your life which is troubling you, speak to someone who can help you, a priest or a spiritual guide. Deal with what is troubling your life. Be radical. Take a step to say, this has to go out of my life. And so, dear friends, I'm praying that in the coming week, you'll take time to study, not in order to change others, but to change yourself. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful moment. I ask that you bless all our listeners. Heal our pain, our emotional pain, our physical pain. Give us financial breakthroughs and bless our families. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you and goodbye. Amen.